I was already planning on writing this, but current events make it all the more vital. I have a technique for making complex decisions, particularly when your decision is based on what another person or group does. And this goes for all sorts of situations, political, business, or intimate relationships. And it works, even if the other people are exhibiting some really narcissistic behaviors. Right, so recently, my son asked me for help. He was negotiating with someone about, well, without putting too fine a point on it, the direction his life was going to take in the next few years. He was unsure how to approach this huge decision because it depended on what someone else did. And that kind of situation is especially hard to plan out. When it's just you, there's lots of resources available providing decision-making strategies. But when you're restricted to a reactive role, it can seem a lot more daunting. My advice was pretty straightforward. Define the areas of negotiation. For each area of negotiation, do the following. Decide what your ideal pie-in-the-sky outcome is. Decide what is unacceptable, the no-go situation. Decide what you will do if the other persons will not agree to something between your ideal and no-go situation. That's it. The system is great for those who are aneurotypical or neuroatypical, whatever term you prefer, uh, those who have anxiety disorders or something similar. You've already done all the hard thinking before you even start talking to the other person. Everything else is just a series of if-then-else trees. Uh, let me give you a practical and fictional example. You're applying for a new job, and the salary is negotiable. You know you need a living wage for someone with zero children. In my area, that's ten sixty nine. You'd like to get 15 bucks an hour. When you start negotiating, you start by suggesting 15 bucks an hour. If they agree to anything above your minimum, 1069 in this example, then you accept the job. If they'll only pay you less than that amount, you reject the job. Repeat as needed. It's that simple. But here's the trick. You have to consider this ahead of time. If you try to do this during negotiations, it's very, very easy to distract you from what you actually need. You must consider this ahead of time to avoid sliding down a slippery slope. You must consider this ahead of time so that you do not agree to something that is in your no-go zone. Now, the business example above is pretty obvious, but it applies to all sorts of decisions. Should you stay in that relationship? Should you drop that friend? What should you do about the country? It's that last that terrifies me right now. With the lack of courage shown by the GOP in the Senate, the GOP regime is already purging those who dared tell the truth. Trump has, again, joked that he should be president for life. And one of Trump's arguments during the Senate trial was that anything he did to help him stay in power was automatically in the country's best interest and therefore legal. What crap! I know people who left this country after Trump's election. Hey, Rob! The election of an unqualified demagogue was enough for them to take action. And that's the question I bring to you today. What will be enough for you, yes, you, to stop going about your daily life as if things are normal? When will you decide that business as normal is no longer an option in this country? When will it be more than you can bear? We're going to read Martin Niemöller's poem again, slowly, here in a second. But first, I want you to realize, we've already locked children in cages and separated children from their parents for daring to believe the words on the Statue of Liberty. Realize that we've already sent hundreds of refugees back to their deaths. Realize that we've already opened the floodgates to pollute the earth again in the name of profit. Realize that we've already restricted the rights of American citizens because they don't act the way you think you should or love someone this regime thinks is abnormal. Realize this regime is punishing entire states for dis daring to disagree with it. They've already come for many people, including those who once agreed with them. When will it be too much for you? First, they came for the communists, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a communist. Then they came for the Jews, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a Jew. Then they came for the Catholics, and I, did, I didn't speak up because I was a Protestant. 
Then they came for me, and by that time, there was no one left to speak up for me.